All right. I promised we'd get into the book, so let's get into it. AI Survival Guide. That's a humorous title. You don't see enough <laughs> funny titles in technical books. Um, but yeah, AI Survival Guide, we're obviously going to have a link to that in the show notes and a giveaway as well. So we'll be giving away yes. the book to, um, to people who would like it. I would have announced that in the episode introduction. Um, and so, yeah, really exciting. Tell us about why you decided that the world needs this book. And yeah, kind of give us an overall overview of the book, uh, for example, perhaps by letting us know what some common concerns are about AI and mm-hmm. how your book addresses them. So when I resigned, I noticed that like this space, I've been doing it since 2011. I helped IBM launch Watson and I've been doing concepts, use case selections, design, development and deployment for 13 years. And like the world just woke up to it, which I'm grateful for because I think the difference between Watson and ChatGPT is one was very B2B centric, only enterprises could leverage AI, but now it's democratized to the masses. So it's just created a a bit of a rude awakening. So the good news is everyone's talking about it. It's not just some innovation lab that I'm running behind the scenes. That's really cool. And then like, hey, there's value in here. Let's push it to production. The heartburn that I fundamentally have is I, I struggle with theorists. I struggle with those that read and regurgitate. I struggle with those that call themselves an expert or are an advisor, and they've never done the work. I just struggle. I'm like, you've got to be in the weeds to understand that in this situation, this doesn't work. But in that situation, it could work if you. And so having gone through all the deployments, having gone through the development trenches, the cultural trenches, the transformation trenches, the building of the trenches, like the teams that I inherit that I have to change or the teams that I have to build. Um, I was just reading all this stuff and people were calling themselves experts and advisors. I'm like, how? Like, if you look at their CV, a year and a half ago on LinkedIn, their title was like senior manager of cyber. And now they're an AI expert or a senior manager of, I don't know, business process optimization. And now they're an AI. I'm like, WTF. It just doesn't make any sense. And so when I was on the speaking circuit, a few people had mentioned like, you know, a lot, but you're not talking about it. Why, why don't you write a book? Why don't you become more active on, on social media? I was like, ah, it's not me. I'm, I'm not the hard sales person. I sell by doing not by speaking. And they're like, you, you need to get out there. And a dear friend of mine, his name is Steve Newry. I think you guys know him on LinkedIn. Major oh following. yeah, you know I've never met him, but I think I am going to be meeting him very soon. I think I'm going to be meeting him in May. Finally, he was a guest on the show, uh, Steve Newry. Uh, yeah, he was in episode number 409, but that was a few weeks before I took over as host of this podcast. Yeah, um, really eager to meet him. He has an yeah unbelievable following online in the AI space. Yeah, uh, I should yeah. also note uh, this is now now that we're just talking about dates, and I'm interrupting you. You should note that your book has just come out. Uh, at the time of this being, so it's last week that your book came out, so people can be, can be going out and buying it. Anyway, sorry, I've completely interrupted you, derailed the conversation. <laughs> Steve Nouri, you were talking about Steve Nouri. Yeah, well, we were in Dubai and we were just chatting, and then two months later, he'd introduced me to Wiley Publishing, and they wanted to do, do more work on leadership and AI and the crossover, and things just gelled. And legitimately, I think we signed the contract in two weeks, and I wrote the book in three, four months, because I wasn't thinking I had already done everything and I had, I had to go back through every file folder from every employer and what I've deployed, what I discovered and all my notes. And so it was the difficult task was not coming up with the topics. It was aggregating it in a cohesive way um, so that non-technologists could understand the coursework and technologists could understand some of the things that they're potentially missing in the conversations. And you've done over, if I remember correctly, it's you've done over 30 production deployments, like serious kind of global AI production or, yeah. or data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have just under 40 enterprise grade AI applications in production. And and they're, they're still alive and well. I think three have been decommissioned. There just wasn't enough talent um, or they couldn't carry it over into the new AI stack. So I think three have been decommissioned based on some folks that still work at the companies. Um, but yeah, so I decided, okay, I'm going to get rid of the hype and all of the that's on LinkedIn and some of the theoretical sources and like, just 
buckle down. Like, here's my favorite. And, and I've gone into clients right now. They're like, here are the use cases that we established with these management consulting firms. I'm like, that's great. But three fourths of those aren't going to work. And they're like, well, why not? And I'm like, you can do POCs. You'll be very successful in the POC, but seven of those 11, you can't push to production. And the question is, why not? I'm like, well, because of X, Y, and Z. Oh, so like, for example, one of the chapters is really around how do you even, what, what the heck goes into an AI strategy? We talk about it just like a data strategy. Have you ever built one and communicated it to the board and fully flushed out what a strategy looks like of how are we going to enable you with data or how are we going to enable you with AI in a way that's comprehensible, understandable, um, touches on all the points uh, that everyone can understand whether you're technical or not. Most people don't have that experience. And then most people pick an AI strategy because they're like, oh, we want to focus on productivity or we want to focus on efficiency. Okay. But based on your existing maturity across infrastructure, data, and talent, and there's five strategies, for example, growth-based, knowledge-based, productivity-based, efficacy-based, and efficiency-based. Each one has a different set of requirements that you need to have on infrastructure, data, and talent. You can't leverage AI and be a growth-based strategy if fundamentally you have a conservative culture, you're in a highly regulated industry, and your enterprise data um, can't be ingested into LLMs without extreme heightened data privacy and data leakage protocols. It's just not possible. So love the fact that love the fact that you want to be a growth-based AI strategy, or you want to deploy a growth-based AI strategy around raising NPS scores or consumer experiences and personalization. You culturally actually can't do it. And from a maturity perspective, you can't do it. And here are the reasons why. People don't know that unless they've actually gone through the deployment. The other aspect of it is like the use cases. Don't pick a use case based on business value. That's a big no-no. Because what's business value to manufacturing versus business value to supply chain versus business value to your financial advisors versus business value to procurement. There is inherent business value in every use case. And if you ever find yourself in the position to be the tiebreaker or decide what you're going to take on, you have naturally picked sides because you can find business value in everything. There's just so much improvements that can benefit from the applications of artificial intelligence. So I invented this framework back when I was in IBM um, called the criticality and complexity matrix. The criticality of it is you you go through a series of questions. Is there imminent threat by a competitor? Are there regulations and fines that are coming down the line? Are you losing market share? Right now it's single digits, but forecasting shows it could be double digits. Like you go through the list and the questions are there and then you rate them um, and it gives you a weight. And then you go through, com and then you go through complexity. And within complexity, you measure, okay, do you have the basics of infrastructure? And here's what you need. Do you have the basics of data? And here's what you need. Do you have the basics of operational agility? Because you're gonna have to, you're, you're gonna have to redesign the operational model. Here's XYZ and the talent XYZ. And then you give each a weight. And then depending on where things plot, if it's highly complex and low criticality, it's a no-brainer. You don't do it. If it's highly critical and low complexity to deploy, those are your use cases. There's a lot that's going to fall into highly critical, somewhat complex to deploy. Those are the ones that require negotiation, but don't start with that first because you haven't developed the muscles internally yet. Like, so there's a method to the madness. And all of this is to avoid getting into what I call perpetual POC purgatory, which is where most folks are right now. So there's, there's like real tangible stuff. So it teaches hardcore technologists, like how to think like business executives and how to communicate. But then for non-technologists, um, how do you even start? And there's like an example um, of a woman who has a business who's faced with a conundrum and she wants to use AI, but she doesn't know if it's appropriate. And like the entire walk through an exercise, um, like hosting workshops, developing a strategy, explaining the why, how to select the use case, how to measure productivity. So just real, real stuff. And so that's why I call it your survival guide, because it's like it's, it's not a playbook. It's not a strategy. It's not high in the sky, like management consulting stuff. It's if you're going to do it, let me explain to you all the mistakes I made and learn from those mistakes. So you don't have to go through them yourself.